So, let's create our first shape. For this, select the pen tool, then click on fill and deselect it. Now let's click on stroke and choose a light color from our palette using the eyedropper. Click OK, and let's create the shape from the center. Place your cursor here and create the first point. Now, hold down the shift key and click here to create a straight line. We can choose the thickness of the line here. Let's click on the number, type in 40, and press enter. Now let's go back to the selection tool using the shortcut V. Let's select the layer, and using the scroll wheel on the mouse, let's zoom in into the preview screen. For those who don't have a scroll wheel on their mouse, you can zoom in and out using these keys. So, after we've zoomed in to see our shape up close, we can see that the end of this line is straight. Let's learn how to round it off. For this, let's open the properties of this layer, open contents, open shape, and open stroke. We can enlarge the panel like this. And here in stroke, we can round the edges and connections. We can now close everything, minimize the panel, and learn how to move the preview screen while in zoom. To move the screen, we need to hold down the space bar and then move it like this. Or we can move the screen by clicking on the middle click of the mouse. And now, I want to talk about an important topic called anchor point. Please don't touch anything and just listen to me. I'll open the rotation parameter and change the value. Pay attention to how the layer moves. It rotates not from the center of the shape. It's because the anchor point is located here. As you can see, there's a small icon here. Let's move it to the center together now. For this, let's select the anchor point tool and drag the anchor point of this layer to another location. If we move the anchor point while holding down the control key, the anchor point will move symmetrically. This way, we can easily center it in the center of the layer. After placing the anchor point, let's press V to switch back to the selection tool and go to align. For those who can't find it, you can open it via window. Let's click here to center our shape to the center of the composition. Now we can set the preview to fit and cancel the grid. However, this time, let's not cancel it from here. Let's cancel it using the shortcut. Press the apostrophe key. Let's press it a few times to practice. We will use this grid often. Now let's create the sphere. To do this, we will click and hold the rectangle tool. Now release it and select the ellipse tool. Now don't do it with me because I want to show you something interesting. Let's see what happens if I try to create the sphere here. Note that the sphere is created on an existing layer. I'll press Ctrl Z to undo the action. And now let's do it together. If we want to create the sphere in a new layer, we need to make sure we are not selecting any layer, and then we can choose the color for the sphere. Let's choose the blue color. And we will cancel the stroke this time. So now, when we create the sphere, it will be in a new layer. Let's create the sphere here while holding down the shift key to make it symmetrical. Now let's release the mouse click and then release the shift key. Next, let's align the sphere to the center using the line and move it downwards. We won't be able to grab it because we're still on the ellipse tool. To move the sphere, let's switch back to the selection tool by pressing V. Now, let's select the layer and grab the sphere and move it down while holding shift for symmetrical movement. Okay, and now, let's name our layers. To do this, we need to select the layer and press enter. We can change the name to stroke 1. Press enter to complete the action. Let's do the same thing for the sphere. We'll call this layer Sphere 1. Next, let's create the text scale. To do this, we need to select the text tool and choose the font Montserrat that we installed earlier. Click once to open the text line, and then type scale. 
press shift to capitalize the first letter and continue typing the rest of the word without holding down shift. Double click on the text to select it. Change the size to 30 and press enter. Select the font style to bold in the toolbar or by using the arrow buttons. Finally, let's choose the text color from here. Now let's say we want to move the text. To exit the text line, we need to press Ctrl Enter. Now we have exited the text line, and I can press V to return to the selection tool. Now go to the paragraph and make sure that the text is left aligned and centered. Let's move a little closer and center the anchor point of the text layer to the center. This time we won't use the anchor point tool. We'll do it with a super useful shortcut, Control alt home Mac users, pay attention to how to do this on your keyboard. Let's use the shortcut together. And voila, the anchor point jumps to the center. And now we can center the text and bring it down while pressing the shift key. Now let's bring back the grid by pressing the apostrophe key. Now let's select all the layers and move everything up using the arrow keys on the keyboard. For larger movements, we'll press the arrows while holding down the shift key. Let's place the layer here. And to assign them all to the same group, we can click on the square here and tag all these layers in blue. Now let's duplicate all these layers. To do this, we will select all the layers and press the shortcut Ctrl D. Next, we will select them and move them down so that they are positioned side by side. To differentiate them from the first three layers, let's tag them in yellow. And now, while all the layers are selected, let's move them to the left. We will hold shift and move them with the left arrow key on the keyboard. Okay, one more time, let's duplicate the first three layers again. This time, we will position the layers upwards. Let's tag them in red. While everything is selected, let's move all the layers to the right while holding the shift key. All right, now let's change the words we have here. We can leave this text layer unchanged and replace its name in the layers panel. Press enter and delete the number two. Now let's double click on this word and change it to rotation. Don't forget to press Ctrl Enter to exit the text line. Finally, we'll change this text to Stretch. Press Ctrl Enter and then V to return to the selection tool. Now I want us to move the layers to be a bit further apart from each other. This time, we'll use a grid called the Proportional Grid. I'll turn off this grid for now and show you how to open it using a shortcut. The shortcut to this grid is ALT and the apostrophe key. Now let's move these layers over here. And those layers over there. Now we can cancel the grid. So let's press ALT and the apostrophe key again. Next, let's set the preview screen to fit and change the colors of the spheres. This one is in yellow, but this sphere will be red. Now let's create the letter A, which is supposed to be up here. To do this, we'll select the text tool, click once here, and then press Shift A to make the letter uppercase. We'll select the letter by double clicking and change the font size to 300. This time, we'll choose the black font style. And now, let's click here. To exit the text line, we'll press Ctrl Enter and V to return to the selection tool. Now let's center the anchor point of this layer using the shortcut we learned. Question, what is the shortcut to center the anchor point? To do this, press Ctrl Alt Home. Now, we will go to align and center the layer in the composition. 
Let's bring back our grid by pressing the apostrophe key and continue designing the scene. In my opinion, we can enlarge this layer a bit. This time, we won't enlarge it through the font size, but we'll enlarge the layer itself through the scale parameter. So let's select the layer and press S to open the scale parameter. Let's change the size to 130. Now, let's raise this layer a bit. It's too big. Let's change the size to 120 and raise the text again. Now, I'll press R to open the rotation parameter and rotate the layer to check that it doesn't touch the other shapes in the scene. Great. Okay. And now, I'll bring the rotation to zero. Now we can close the parameters and let's place the layer above all the others and change its color to none. This way, the layer will be gray. All right, we have finished designing the scene and now we're moving on to the animation stage. But before that, I highly recommend taking a 10 minute break. Get up from your chair, do some light stretches, make some tea or coffee and come back refreshed for the next part.